Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we are painting up a clansman of Lambden. Lambden? Lambden. Lamedon. You know the model we mean. These brave, stalwart fighters hailing from the fiefdoms under the leadership of Angbor the Fearless. To be a really fun model to paint today, we've got some different colours and some different methods of painting being used today, as well as showing you how to paint up that all too intimidating freehand tartan to make it look really eye appealing on the tabletop. This particular sculpt is a metal model, so as always, we trimmed any excess flash off the model and then took the time to file down any mould lines that might be present on the model. The model was then affixed to the slotter base using super glue, and once this was dry, we covered the base in fine modelling sand and primed with Chaos Black Spray ready for painting. We really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We're super excited to get this on the channel for you. So please relax, sit back and enjoy the video. We're going to start by base coating all the skin with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Making sure to get all around the underside of the neck, around the arms and hands and around the backs of the knees. We're going to base coat the hair now with a mix of XV88 and Rhinox Hide. This will just tone down and give a slightly more naturalistic hue to the XV88 blonde look we're trying to achieve. We're going to base coat all the armour plating now with a mix of Iron Hand Steel and Baharoth Blue. This will just give a subtle nod to the Dolanroth heritage and give them that slightly more ethereal look to the armour which is more fitting than their counterparts of Minas Tirith. At this stage as well, we're also going to pick out the hilt and the sword blade with Lead Belcher. We're going to base coat all the cloth now with a mix of Macrag Blue and Kaledor Sky. This includes the kilt hanging down over their waist and the big long sash over the back of the model. Now we're going to carefully pick up the boots and the strapping around the hilt of the sword with Fondia Brown. Our final base colour here will be a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black applied to the upper arm cloth area. Now we're going to use Reitland Flesh Shade, slightly thin down with Lamia Medium and apply it all over wash to all the skin areas, letting this sit in the recesses to provide some natural depth and shading. Once the wash is dry, increase the amount of Cadian Flesh Tone in the initial base coat mix for the first layer stage. We're going to apply this to the upper areas of the skin, leaving the wash showing in the deepest recesses around cheekbones, necklines and between the fingers and more defined musculature. Now we're going to layer over with pure Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to push our highlights a little bit further to create some nice definition in the facial features as well as separating out all the fingers and further defining all the musculature over the forearms and the legs. Once you're happy with how this looks, we're going to start highlighting up now with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh, working on pushing the definition of the lighter areas of skin 
further by keeping our highlights tighter and thinner and focusing on more of the pronounced areas of facial detail and other skin definition. Leaving the layer showing in the recesses of the previous stages will create a nice transition between the darker and lighter areas of flesh tone. Finally, we're going to add Pallid Witch Flesh to the Cadian Flesh Tone Kislev Flesh Mix and apply a very fine edge highlight just to the uppermost areas of skin, focusing more on the bridge of the nose, the brow, the cheekbones, as well as the knuckle joints and the areas of skin that are most prominent against the light source. Very carefully with Abaddon Black, painting the eye holes with two horizontal strips. Now we're going to finish off the eye definition with a few dots of Pallid Witch Flesh either side, just to finish off his eyes. We're going to give the hair a washing out with Agrax Earthshade, thin down again with Lamia Medium. Try and avoid this pooling as we don't want the hair to look unnatural once this is dried. Now we're going to start layering up by adding some Talon Sand to the XV88 Rhinox Hide Mix, making sure to leave the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the deepest recesses and focusing more on the bigger clumps and groupings of hair. Now we're going to layer up further with pure Talon Sand, keeping our highlights tighter and thinner once again here to create a nice natural look of flow and movement across all the hair taking time now to separate out individual strands. Now we're going to highlight with a mix of Talon Sand and Pallid Witch Flesh, focusing a little bit more on the outer curls and most prominent areas of hair to create a real sense of movement across his head as he runs into battle. Once you're happy with how your hair looks, apply a 50-50 mix of Talon Sand and Pallid Witch Flesh just to the most prominent curls and outer areas of hair, including the tips of hair down the bottom of his back, as well as the brow. We're going to give the armour plating now a wash with some very thin down Drakenhof Nightshade just to further enhance that slightly blue look we want with the armour once it's finished. Be very careful with this, try and avoid this pooling as this will really hinder the look of the armour once we've finished. Now we're going to tone down all the armour uniformly with Nuln Oil. At this point we can also apply this wash to the blade and the hilt of the sword. Now we're going to use Iron Breaker and we're going to very carefully edge highlight all the plate mail over the model. Just want to focus this on the very edges of all the metal work just to provide that nice sense of light shining off the most prominent areas of the armour. These include all the edges of the greaves, the tree on the arm braces as well as the tree insignia on the chest plate around the neckline and defining the edges of the sword blade. Finally, we're going to use Stormhost Silver and just apply a very fine dot highlight to the most prominent areas of the metalwork just to give that final sense of light glinting off the most prominent and sharp areas of all the metalwork. Now we're going to apply another wash of Drakenhof Nightshade, thin down again with Lamia Medium 
and we're going to apply this to all the blue cloth on the model. A nice controlled measure to avoid any pooling and give the cloth a nice natural recessed shade. Once the wash is dry, we're going to layer over with pure kale or sky, leaving the Drakenhof nightshade showing in the deepest recesses and the deepest folds in all the material. You might need to apply this in a couple of thin down coats to get a nice smooth finish over all the cloth. The benefit here is that all the cloth in this model is very well defined so it's very easy to know where you need to apply this layer. Now we're going to start layering up by adding some techless blue to the Keldor Sky layer stage. You can apply this in as many stages as you want, adding increasing amounts of techless blue each time you go. And each time you apply this layer, work your highlights thinner and tighter to create a real natural flow of movement across all the material on the model. Working your way up to a pure techless blue highlight overall once you finish with this stage. As shown here, this is the model as it is now once we've worked our way up to a pure techless blue layer stage in preparation for our highlighting stages now. Now we're going to highlight with a mix of techless blue and lothan blue and we're going to push the layer stages a bit further by keeping our highlights more precise and more tight and focusing more on the upper and outer folds of all the cloth material to create a nice sense of movement and a real natural sense of definition between the lighter and darker areas of cloth. Finally, we're going to apply a very fine edge highlight just to the most prominent folds of all the cloth and all the material with low therm blue. Keep good control of your brush here as you want to keep the cloth looking really natural and just highlight where the light will be hitting off the most pronounced areas of material. We're not going to be highlighting up to too bright a tone here as we don't want to detract from the tartan freehand we're going to be doing in a moment. Now we're going to use Techless Blue and we're going to start the most painstaking part of this model, the Tartan Freehand. With the Techless Blue we want to draw in a nice uniform grid pattern across the entirety of the kilt. Brush control is key here so make sure you've got a good tip to your brush and make sure the paint goes only where you want it to. Remember, you can always add more paint but you can't take it away if it gets messed up. Now using Storm Vermin Fur we're going to reapply the same cross hatching we have with the Techless Blue but this time we're going to offset it just to the right of the previous pattern. This will just create a nice base look for our tartan freehand. Once again, make sure your brush control is as precise and thin as it can be here to get the best effect of the tartan once it's finished. Once you're happy with how your base tartan looks, now we're going to go over the Storm Vermin Fur, this time with Pallid Witch Flesh. Take your time with this, we cannot stress this enough. This is the most painstaking and precise part of this model and the last thing you want is to mess this up at the penultimate stage. We still want to see a little bit of the storm vermin either side of the pad of witch flesh if we can but it's not the end of the world if we can't because the storm vermin would have given us that nice base layer so the pad of witch flesh won't be quite as dark a transition just against the blue. As we did here, you can always go over the techless blue grid with low therm blue just to make it pop that little bit more. Now we're going to apply a wash of null oil to the upper arm cloth area on the model. Once this is dry, we're going to layer over by adding a bit more storm vermin fur to the Abaddon black and leaving the wash showing in the deepest recesses around the arms. Finally, we're going to apply an edge highlight now of Storm Vermin Fur just to finish off the last bit of cloth on this model. We 
We're going to apply a pre-washed layer now to the boots and the sword strapping with a mix of Fondia Brown and Deathclaw Brown, leaving the Fondia Brown showing in the deepest recesses to help further enforce that look of aged leather. Once you're happy with how this looks, apply a wash to all these brown areas with Agrax Earthshade. Now once that wash is dry, we're going to increase the amount of Deathclaw Brown in the previous mix and apply this as another layer, leaving the wash showing in the recesses, focusing on framing the boots that a little bit more and picking out and defining more the material strapping on the sword. Now we're going to highlight by adding some Karak Stone to the previous brown mix. The Karak Stone will just further enhance that look of aged old leather that we want to achieve with this model. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight by increasing the amount of Karak Stone to an approximate 50-50 split with the original base coat. Now for the final details. We're going to pick out all the extra boot strappings around the back of the legs and around the collarbone with dryer bark. We're going to apply an edge highlight to these now, just with a little bit of Gawthor Brown, just to give them a little bit of definition and help them stand out against the other browns on the model. Finally, we're going to pick out all the belts and buckles and brooches, just with Lead Belcher. The base was dry brushed in three stages, first off starting with dry bark to get a nice undertone for our gravelly look we want for the clansman, followed up with a second dry brush of Gawthor Brown over the top, and finally a very fine dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh just to finish off the look for our sand. The base was decorated with Midland Tufts dead leaves and clump foliage to add a little bit more of an eye appealing touch to this model. Finally, the rim of the base was painted with dry bark. And there we have it, our finished clansman of Landon, ready to charge forth, great sword in hand, to help his fiefdom kin on the field of battle. Dol Amroth for Gondor.